Thanks a lot for calling in. I'm sure you get a lot of requests. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry my, my background is really boring. I'm always aware of the background when I'm doing these video video calls. It's just, it's, uh, it's not as cool as it could be, so <laughs> my apologies. Don't worry. Uh, so after getting all these awesome new investors, what does the future look like next three months for product time? Next three months. So I've been getting that question a lot. And first off, is my head giant on the screen or am I on a little computer? I'm just curious. <laughs> you're big enough. Yeah, you're, okay. you're a little small. Um, yeah, so for the next three months, honestly, what we're doing is we're building out the team. We have uh, someone who started Rado, who started earlier this week, and another engineer starting in two weeks. So really focusing on recruiting and building out the team and building out the current product and really focusing on our, our current community and current audience. And as you guys all know, it's very much in the startup world, in the techie world, a lot of entrepreneurs, founders, et cetera. Um, and there's some cool things that I'm excited about. You know, we just released, some of you may have noticed this, but we just released some social features. Right now, when, when someone posts something, someone that you follow on Twitter posts something, you might get a notification of that. Not all the time, but you might get a notification when they post a product, and that's the first step towards adding some social layers and some social features on, on a ton. So within the next few weeks, you'll see some following aspects. You'll see some other things in that area. And really what we're doing is preparing for next year when we do more expansion and um, you'll see much more changes then. What do you, what do you think we should do actually? That's my question. Since I have, I don't know how many people there, but it looks like a lot. What do you think we should be doing? Somebody answer that for me. <laughs> do my job. Congratulations. Cheers. Thanks. Um, so how are you planning on monetizing products? Are you thinking about that at all? Or so on something like that, like a blog, are you thinking about how to monetize it? Yeah. Good question. Um, so That's there's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't need to make money ever. Um, we're just <laughs> money and hiring and burning through it all. Uh, no, honestly, uh, there's some some more obvious things that we may experiment with and some of the, the more obvious is product promotion. You know, of course we'll do it in a, in a smart way and we'll be very obvious about what is paid for, but I think that we can provide relevant product recommendations based on what you've done on the site, what you've upvoted, what you've clicked on. We sort of have this over time interest of, of what you like and I, I believe there's some smart ways we can do that. Now, that's less interesting and, and I, I think a little bit more boring than what I want to do. Um, you know, one idea longer term is how can we help you buy things or help you sign up more easily on Product Hunt? And take, for example, you see something cool like what was, I'm going to pull up my, excuse me for a moment, I'm going to pull up Product Hunt real quick and see what that product was called because I forgot the name. Uh, it was, it is um, the Lifta Desk Organizer. I don't know if anyone saw that, but it's really cool, very minimalistic, wooden handcrafted desk organizer um, product. And Right now, to buy that, you need to go to that site, you need to enter your credit card, you need to sign up, and you need to go through all this to purchase that item. So I think we can help with that, uh, potentially be a part of that transaction, and make it easier for consumers. One thing I'd love to see while our next question comes up is sub-communities. Um, so there's some really, you said that right? Looks like you froze. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, oh, cool, cool. Yeah, uh, to have sub-communities, so like we, Dronecraft, which is presenting next, uh, they posted yesterday, and they got a lot of upvotes. But to connect with other drone uh, fans and product people, and kind of create that sub community would be really cool. Called dronies. Dronies, <laughs> yes, the dronies sub. <laughs> I have a lot of drony friends. They they totally geek out on that stuff, so I totally get that. Hey, um. So you've done a great job of uh, curating great content and keeping it short. It seems like you kind of hit a sweet spot where it's um, kind of in Twitter length where you can kind of consume the days worth the products. Um, how do you see that scaling up? And uh, right now there's kind of a tech focus. Do you see this expanding to other different types of products? Um, and how, how might you guys integrate that into kind of more of a platform? Yeah. Yeah, so I mentioned, you know, right now in the next three months, we're focusing on the current community, current audience, current types of products, which which is vast, but it's very tech-centric. Longer term, early next year, you'll see other categories emerge and other 
drone categories maybe in the future. Uh, there might be a droney hunt, who knows. And so that's exactly where we're going longer term. And, and the reason for that is we're starting to see these sub-communities already emerge. You know, right now, I don't know if you've noticed, but there's this really strong design community that's, that's kind of emerging, and you see a lot of design tools and resources that get upvoted, and people love that stuff, but not everyone. And as it grows, there's going to be these really strong communities that are super passionate about design stuff or drones or whatever, and they're going to want their own place. So we are certainly looking in that direction, and there are many different types of categories that split out over time. Hey, how's it going, man? I'm Adam. Uh, I know you've been focusing both on product on radio and on the website on what products that teams are using currently. And I'm just curious to kind of get your, your insight on, you know, on, on the products out there and what, I mean, what trends you're kind of seeing in that, that uh, particular demo. Yeah, that's an interesting question. I, I'm always fascinated by what teenagers and younger people use in technology just because I'm getting older and I'm losing touch with what the kids are using nowadays. Um, and you know, I, I know a few uh, more tech centric uh, teenagers like Ryan Orbuck and Michael Saman, and they have a different perspective because they're very much entrepreneurs themselves. But you know, I, I can't say I have a lot of um, insight in that area just because I haven't done research or focused on it too much. But there are some interesting behaviors that they've told me about that emerged. One being, I think I may have mentioned this on one of the radio shows, or they have. One of them is they, they will turn down the brightness in their phone to where you can barely even see the screen. And that's how they normally use their phone. And, and the intention behind that is they kind of want to be private. They don't want people to peer over and look at their Snapchat or whatever they're looking at. And there's these tiny little behaviors like that that I think are just interesting to identify that I personally don't ever see because I'm in San Francisco. And, um, you know, maybe a larger trend, I think if there's any patterns I've seen, I'm just not close enough to, uh, to team teams to really have much to say there. Be honest. That's cool. And do you have any insight on? Uh, I know anonymous Facebook uh, big story coming out this week with Facebook going anonymous. Do you have any insight on that? <laughs> uh, so I, I know I know Josh has been working on that. You know he, he joined Facebook after Branch, and I knew he was doing something in social and mobile, but I know nothing about the product. I'm really interested to see what what they come out with. And Josh is you know on Twitter he he said publicly he'll be on the product and he'll be answering questions. And, really particularly interesting conversation I think because he has a lot of you know experience in social products and now coming to Facebook and doing something that is supposedly an anonymous space is really fascinating Thanks, man. yeah so we're using this new tool this area of product uh, called Bonvo and I think someone on Bonvo has a question hi hey how's it going good how are you doing well um, so I was wondering, I was talking to people about Product Hunt, and someone was actually wondering if you have any plans on being able to save previous lists that existed. Yeah. So we, yeah, it's, it's, for those that don't know, we've been doing collections every single day, a different collection, and it could be like the team products collection, which was curated by teams, or it could be New York-based startups or products, or uh, iPhone apps, those kind of things. And... You know, it's all been very experimental, and intentionally we've kind of put it away and hidden it from the exact the main experience because we don't want to disrupt that too much. And what we're thinking is, do we want to make those permanent? Do we want to allow people to create their own collections? Does that overcomplicate the product, though? So I guess to answer your question, we're still experimenting and figuring out where that fits. And with what we're doing with Product Hunt in general, we're very experimental, and we're also aware that we don't want to change things too drastically. Right. That's one why... We released the image-based presentation. I don't know if you all have seen this, but we have now a grid view of products where it's a screenshot of the home page and it's grid rather than a list. And for some things, it works. For some people, they like it. But for us to drastically change the home page to look like that would be a big mistake. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Time for one more question. Which maybe can turn something like ready to ask or... Uh, collections, but I don't even check it out yet, just so I can check it out later. Here. Is there yes. anything around like favorites or just like bookmark? You're the third person to, to mention something like that in the past couple days. And so, a recurring theme is the ability to bookmark or to save things that you want to check out later. And I know people that have Trello boards just for product hunt of products they found that they want to check out. And they 
have like almost a task flow of, of using them or storing them for later. Like here are my marketing tools, for example. Um, so there, that use case exists, and we're trying to find the right way to do that. There's one option, which is the most obvious, in that maybe we have a bookmark button that's completely separate from the upload button. But the worry is that that might overcomplicate it, might confuse people, and then what does the bookmark mean versus the upload? So we're still exploring the right approaches. Um, and you know, we're also exploring the user profiles. Those are getting redesigned. A lot of people don't know you even have a profile in Product Hunt, and it's really our fault because it's kind of hidden. Um, but when you upload something, it's stored there, and we'll be showing other things too, like products you've made, for example, if you're marked as a maker and that kind of thing. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for uh, for calling in, and uh, we really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for organizing this. This is awesome. It's um, I love when these meetups happen because I get to see them from Twitter, like the pictures and everything. So, tweet some pictures, and I will favorite the hell out of them. Yeah. Hey Ryan, um, Michael, we exchanged emails a few weeks back, and you told me uh, the meetups would have the uh, product on stickers. So I was just wondering what the stickers are. <laughs> <laughs> are you sure? Do you have that email? I don't. <laughs> I have that email. I'll forward it to you right now. <laughs> okay. Next time there'll be stickers. So yeah, we need to um, we need to figure out a sticker process for our community meetups. <laughs> Oh, so Ryan, there's a lot of developers here. Do you want to plug your hackathon that's coming up? Yeah, that's a good good point. It is. Let me pull the date so I don't mess it up. <laughs> we're doing a hackathon in San Francisco. I'm sorry, actually down in Mountain View is where we're meeting. And that is on October... Um, I should know this off the top of my head. 26th? Um, yeah, well, you tell me. <laughs> uh, October 26th and 27th. And it's not just going to be in Mountain View, but it will be remote. So if you're in New York or wherever, you can hack along with us. I think there are some people, Eric has actually been running a lot of this, so he's more familiar with, with everything here. But um, some people are organizing meetups in those locations in New York and, and Portland, Oregon, and others. So um, hopefully there'll be one in New York. I'm pretty sure someone's setting something up. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Ryan. Yeah, cool. Thanks, guys. So next we'd like to welcome up Drone Craft.